Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now if you've got about $100 or pounds to spend on a graphics card then you're probably going to find yourself something pretty decent when it comes to looking on the used market. But what if you want something brand new and want to spend a similar sort of amount? Well, perhaps you might consider one of these. This is the Radeon RX 560 from AMD who were kind enough to send me this version of the card today. This is the Sapphire Pulse I think I had that upside down. Sapphire Pulse 4GB edition of the card, which comes slightly overclocked from the factory. But don't worry, just because they sent it to me, that isn't going to influence my final decision and verdict when it comes to telling you how good or bad this card is. So I'll put the specs up on the screen for you guys, but I want to talk to you about a few of these features. Not too much though, as I want to make today's video specifically more about the gaming. However, this card has everything you would expect from a modern day budget graphics card. Direct X12 support, Vulcan, um, Radeon Chill which dynamically adjusts the frame rate depending on what's going on on screen, Free Sync, and perhaps the most underrated feature is Relive Capture. Now what this does is it allows you to capture the gameplay footage without any effect on FPS. Now all the clips that you're going to see in today's video have been recorded with Relive Capture, which to be honest I didn't even know existed until I tested it out on this card. I mean it is a perfect way to capture your gameplay very handy if you want to get into YouTube video making, gameplay videos or even benchmark videos. However, the results you do see on screen, the average frame rates, won't be representative of the actual footage. There is a very slight 1 or 2% decrease in frames, um, but nothing obviously noticeable when you are playing the game itself. But I wanted to mention that because in my opinion that is a very decent feature that probably will go underrated. But let's get into it and see if this card is worth the $115 or pounds that they charge for it. Right, so first up we have Grand Theft Auto 5, which at 1080p, as we've used throughout this video, ran at high settings with an average of 58 frames per second. That 1% and 0.1% low there are quite close together, and the minimum only dropped down to 44, a more than respectable result for this game on this card. Fallout 4 next at 1080p once again to average out at 52 frames per second. Now I don't know why, but GTA and Fallout 4 tend to perform very similar across all of the cards that I test um, must just be a coincidence because there's no similarities in the game engine and just like GTA 5 Fallout 4 ran very very well next up it's Hitman a game that runs particularly well on AMD cards and here at the medium settings it ran with 53 frames per second on average here in the Paris level dropping to just 31 on one occasion although that didn't happen very often and that was a minimum frame rate that I only saw once or twice. Next up it's Dota 2, maximum settings this time round with an average of 90 frames per second and I believe a lot of people say that this card is intended for esports titles such as this. As you can see there that minimum frame rate didn't drop below the low 70s and so a game like Dota 2, League of Legends, things like that will be more than playable on this card. Overwatch now, another popular title which I really enjoy playing to average out at 100 frames per second with the high settings preset. You could probably turn things up to ultra here, but the game defaulted to high and so I chose to keep them. As you can see there, the minimum being 81, this game was more than playable throughout and this was similar on most maps. Another game I haven't tested in a while is Rocket League, again to average out above that more than playable 60 frames per second line. Honestly, I would have been happy with 30 30, especially as I test older hardware most of the time and so 64 frames per second on average here was a very good result with the minimum really not dropping much below that. And finally we put Witcher 3, the most demanding game we tried today, to the test with the high settings but low post processing to average 38. If you wanted a high frame rate here I would advise dropping things down to medium or even low. But in my opinion 38 is more than playable, it achieves a nice balance between looks and performance. So in conclusion, is the RX 560 a decent budget graphics card? Well to be honest I think it is. For the price you're sort of looking at this or the GTX 1050 which I don't want to make this a comparison video by the way um, is going to be a bit of a difficult choice I would have to say if you prefer AMD go with the RX 560 if you prefer Nvidia go with the GTX 1050 however having spent time with both of those cards in the past I would probably pick I'm not sure 
I'll leave that to you. I don't want to make a decision, um, but I'm sure I'll have a comparison video coming up in the near future. I hope you've enjoyed this video of the RX 560 today, guys. If you did, leave a like down below. If you didn't, leave a dislike, subscribe if you haven't done so already, and hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.